On this video, we will cover the basic functionality of the Haas Vector Drive Assembly. We'll give you a brief description of how the typical spindle system on a Haas machine works, and we'll talk about the different conditions that can generate a vector drive alarm and how to troubleshoot each condition. The Haas Vector Drive Assembly is the source of power for the spindle motors of Haas CNC machines, and the source of DC power for the servo amplifiers. There are three versions of the Haas Vector Drive, the 20, 40, and 60 horsepower assemblies. All three operate the same way. This is a simplified diagram of a typical Haas spindle system. The vector drive takes three phase power from the main transformer. The AC power is rectified and converted into a DC bus. A typical DC bus should range between 320 and 350 volts DC. When the program or operator commands spindle speed, the controller sends command signals to the drive that represent the current needed to achieve the program's spindle velocity. The drive generates PWM power based on the command signals and feeds the motor. As the spindle motor spins, its encoder generates feedback signals that represent its velocity and position. When the spindle motor reaches certain velocity, the controller sends a command to the IOPCV to cycle the Y delta contactor assembly to switch from Y to delta, and from delta to Y during deceleration. When the motor is commanded to decelerate or stop, the motor generates back voltage. This voltage goes back to the drive's DC bus. The drive constantly monitors the DC bus. When the voltage reaches a certain level, the drive dissipates the extra voltage through the region load. The Haas Vector Drive is a large amplifier with some additional features. The drive consists of a high voltage power supply section, an amplifier section, and a regeneration load section. The power supply section supplies DC power to both the Vector Drive and all the access servo amplifiers. The regeneration load section ensures that the energy produced by the deceleration of the motor doesn't cause an over voltage, but is absorbed by the load resistors. The amplifier section operates exactly like a servo amplifier, but it's capable of much higher current. It operates from analog signals sent by the controller. These signals represent the amount of current going to the motor and the direction of the rotor. Vector drives have protection circuits against abnormal conditions, such as over temperature, over current, low and high voltage conditions, motor or cable short circuit, and shorter region load. When one of these conditions is present, the vector drive will stop all outputs and will generate an alarm. Vector drive assemblies have their own temperature sensor that monitors the heatsink temperature near the transistors. Alarm 200 occurs when the sensor indicates over 90 degrees Celsius. This can be caused by an extended overload condition, a faulty cooling fan, or high shop temperatures. The drive will generate the alarm and will maintain that alarm for as long as the condition is present. Most of the time, there is no need to replace the drive. Look for the root cause of the condition. Check and inspect the cooling fan. Measure the drive's internal temperature. Let the drive cool down and reset the alarm. If the ambient temperature is too high, you can recommend the use of a has cap cool option for the machine. The following video will show you the correct way to troubleshoot and to test the drive when alarm 200 is displayed. In this video, we will show you how to troubleshoot your machine when it generates alarm 200. This occurs when the vector drive heatsink reaches 90 degrees Celsius and the cooling fan does not turn on. The cooling fan should turn on when the heat sink temperature reaches 50 degrees Celsius. The cooling fan will turn off when the heat sink temperature drops below 50 degrees Celsius. This prolongs the life of the fan. If the heat sink temperature is above 60 degrees Celsius and the cooling fan does not turn on, turn off the machine and main circuit breaker and wait for the vector drive to fully discharge. Before beginning any work inside the control cabinet, the vector drive high voltage indicator light must be off for at least five minutes. If the voltage indicator light is on, do not touch the electrical components. Remove the fan cover and check the condition of the fan. If your fan is dirty, clean it before further troubleshooting. After cleaning the fan, check the fan cable. Make sure the female connectors are not damaged and the cable is properly seated. Normally, you would check for voltage when the fan is on. Since the circuit powering the fan is a solid state circuit, it is not possible to check for voltage without a load. It will always show 240 volts AC. If you have a spare fan, Fan, test if the old fan is faulty by installing the spare fan and run a program that will exercise the spindle. Using a temperature gun, measure the temperature at the heat sink. Make sure the fan turns on around 50 degrees Celsius. If the new fan does not turn on or is hesitating or running at a low speed, then the vector drive is faulty. If you do not have a spare fan, another method to check the fan is to connect the fan directly to the vector drive. Using a spare fan cable, connect the leads to the 240 volt AC input supply voltage A and C terminals. Turn on the machine. If the fan turns on immediately and at a normal speed, then the vector drive is faulty. 
For more information on troubleshooting the vector drive, refer to the troubleshooting guide on our website. Thank you for watching. Shorted cables, a shorted motor, or a coolant contaminated motor can cause a short across the drive's outputs. A shorted region load or a shorted amplifier can also cause the drive to react. The drive protects itself during all of these conditions by generating any of the following alarms. Alarm 993, amplifier short circuit. Alarm 648, DC bus shorted. Or alarm 647, region load shorted. When any of these alarms is displayed, the drive will stop all outputs to the spindle motor. The first thing to do for a short circuit related alarm is to inspect the motor and make sure that it's not shorted. If you're planning on using a mega, make sure that all wiring to the drive is disconnected. Check the reading load and make sure that resistance leg to leg and leg to ground. The reading leg to leg will be between 5 to 22 ohms depending on the size of your machine and very high resistance to chassis ground, typically in the range of megons or open. Inspect the white delta contactor assembly and check all connections. Signs of arcing or overheating indicate a damaged contactor assembly. In some rare cases, the drive will suffer damage during a short circuit condition. The following video will show you the correct way to test the vector drive if you suspect that it's damaged. The vector drive is designed with internal load monitoring so that it's able to protect itself from damage in an overload condition. In spite of this, it's possible for a vector drive to fail in a non-resettable way. Here's some quick tests you can do to determine if the vector drive is actually damaged. Before you start, set the main circuit breaker to the off position and wait until the red LED on the vector drive goes out. If the LED is still on, there may be a lethal level of voltage on the DC bus. Before you perform any operation on the vector drive, make sure the LED has gone out completely. Then, to double check, use a voltmeter to make sure there is no voltage at the positive and negative terminals. Once you're certain that there is no voltage in the vector drive, label and remove the leads from the DC bus. In our tests, we want to make sure we are only measuring resistance through the vector drive itself. First, check the output on the positive side of the DC bus. Set your multimeter to resistance test mode and put the black lead onto terminal 2. It's labeled with a plus sign. Use the red lead to measure the resistance to motor terminals 9, 10, and 11. These are labeled A, B, and C. The meter should show high resistance readings, typically in the range of kilo or mega ohms. If your meter reads very low resistance, the vector drive is damaged. Check the output on the negative side of the DC bus. With the multimeter still set to resistance test mode, put the black lead onto terminal 3. It's labeled with a minus sign. Touch the red lead to terminals 9, 10, and 11 again. As in the positive side test, the meter should show high resistance readings, typically in the range of kilo or mega ohms. If your meter reads very low resistance, the vector drive is damaged. Now let's check the region load. Make sure the multimeter is still set to resistance mode. Touch your red lead to terminal 1 and the black lead to terminal 3. As before, if the circuit is good, you'll see a high resistance. Low resistance means the circuit is blown and the vector drive needs to be replaced. Finally, check the status of the bridge rectifier. Still in resistance mode, touch the black lead to the machine chassis. Touch the red lead to terminals 4, 5, and 6. These are on the input side of the bus and are labeled A, B, and C. If it shows open, the bridge rectifier is good. A low resistance reading indicates the bridge rectifier has failed and that the vector drive needs to be replaced. Now that you've determined the vector drive has failed, it's important to eliminate other possible causes. Check the spindle motor, the spindle motor cables, the region assembly, and the delta Y assembly if fitted for shorts or for other damage. Make sure that you identify and repair any problems here before you replace the vector drive, or you just might damage the new one in the same way. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Alarms 444 region on too long, alarm 650 over voltage, and alarm 9955 vector drive or DC power under voltage are most of the time caused by issues with the incoming AC power or incorrectly tapped transformer. The first thing to do for a voltage related alarm is to measure the incoming AC voltage, measure leg to leg and leg to ground. Make sure that the transformer is correctly tapped based on the incoming power. Lines connected to the incorrect tap cause either too high DC bus or intermittent low voltage conditions. Measure the DC bus at the vector drive at terminals 2 and 3. The typical DC bus ranges between 320 and 350 volts DC. 
Compare your reading with the display DC bus gauge. This should match with a variation of about plus minus 2%. Before replacing any vector drive assembly, make sure that all wiring to and from the drive, to and from the motor, and the controller are inspected. Make sure that all cables are firmly secure and that no cables are pinched or damaged. Inspect the cable that connects connector J1 of the vector drive to the IO PCB. Make sure that the cable is in good condition and is seated properly. Inspect the cable that connects connector J3 from the vector drive to the controller PCB. Make sure that the cable is in good condition and seated properly. Only after all inspections are made, you can replace the vector drive. Remember to find the root cause before any repair is made.